So uh, tonight's going to be uh, pretty informal. Uh, I'm going to start out talking about uh, uh, why food is not enough. You, know, when I was younger, or shoot, when I was a teenager, you could eat the right food and get healthy, but now everything is so processed and overproduced uh, uh, for mass consumption. There's no vitamins or minerals left in our food anymore, right? And so that is why sometimes we have to supplement. Now, uh, just to preface everything. All this is great stuff, and you know I encourage you to purchase supplements if that's your thing. But you should get everything you need from the food you eat. Okay, so if you're eating good quality food, enough of it, and you're getting it sourced properly, hopefully you'll be getting a lot of the stuff you need from the food, and you don't need to purchase so much stuff. But by all means, if you need to purchase something, do that. So the first part of tonight is going to be about uh, why we no longer have the vitamins and minerals we need in our food because the way it's processed. And then the second part, we'll be going through uh, basic supplementation on what most people should take or use, and then uh, for, for the majority of us. And then there's a lot of other stuff here. I'm not going to spend all, all evening long going through each one of these, but at the end of that initial section, I just want you guys to ask questions about certain conditions or certain supplements you should take for certain things. Uh, that way we can focus more on what you need, not just what I think you guys need. Does that make sense? So feel free to ask questions along the evening at any time, not just when we get to the Q&A part, right? So uh, any guests in the room? Really quick. Two, three. Anybody else? No? Nope. Just, just two or three? I see one in the back. He doesn't want to raise his hand. Welcome, sir. <laughs> I like your hat. All right. And then uh, my lovely wife is walking in the door. We're going to put her on the spot. Right. She's coming from a softball or baseball game. So. Uh, she's here as my backup in case you guys stump me on a question. Right? For those of you who know, Stacy is also our nutritionist, so she does a lot of this stuff too. Uh, so initially we're going to go through some food stuff, and then we'll get into the vitamins and minerals and supplements towards the end. Uh, if something I say resonates with you and you guys are a guest, you're welcome to uh, see my wife or somebody afterwards. And I would love to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one next week and schedule a consultation if you would want to do that. All right? As long as we can do it next week, we'll, we'll fit that in. So, vitamin 101. So, uh, what does war have to do with our food supply? Anybody want to guess? Mm -hmm. Scarcity. Mm -hmm. Not much of it. Sir? Not much of it. Scarcity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, scarcity. Yeah. Uh, back, actually, back in 1909 uh, is when the, our U.S. our government actually decided to say, "Hey, let's come up with certain food requirements for our population so everybody's healthy." Right? And it sort of sat on the table until World War II come around in 39, 40, whenever that was for you history buffs. And then they said, "Well, we're sending all these people off the war. We need to feed and keep our soldiers healthy on the battlefield, and we need to keep our country healthy so we can support the, the people in World War II because everything was all about war then. So they implemented what we call the, uh, the food supply rules or laws or the, those labels you guys see now on the back of things. That was because of 1909 and then in World War II in 1939 or 40, they decided, hey, from now on, let's put a food label and require manufacturers to label manufacturers to label what you're purchasing so you know you're getting enough nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. All right? That's when stuff actually started to be fortified. So when certain staple crops like your, your grains and your breads and your, your, uh, your pastas and all these big things, and dairy, all these big things we consume as a country, uh, when, when they started testing this stuff and it didn't have the minerals and vitamins in it, the government made them put that stuff in it. So that is why now when you buy certain pastas or breads or dairy, it says fortified with vitamin D or with what vitamin A or whatever it is, because the government requires them to do that because we don't get enough of it from the food like we should, all right? So these are the main things that uh, are on pretty much all the labels that we, we look at before we get into vitamins and supplements, and that is uh, protein, carbohydrates, fats, cholesterol content, dietary fiber, the 10 different vitamins, the nine different minerals that the government says you should have a certain amount of percentage of your diet should go to this every single day. And that is why those are listed on the back of any type of vitamin or supplement or food that you purchase because the government requires them to do that, all right? So, if they require us to put all this stuff on there and they require us to fortify the food, then we should all be getting enough vitamins and minerals, correct? But we don't, right? I mean, there's these all kinds of nutritional deficiencies, chronic disease that's caused by malnutrition, all this stuff, even in our country today, we have a huge 
quantity of food. We waste more food than anybody else around the world. We waste more food than other countries eat in a day, right? And so we waste so much food because we're getting lots of uh, quantity of food, but not the quality we need. And that's why we still have all these metabolic conditions like type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, chronic fatigue, uh, you know, hormone imbalances, IBS, all kinds of gut issues. It's because of the food supply that we're eating. We're eating junk, right? So when it comes to essential, uh, what we need to know, what we actually need is what we call the essential vitamins and minerals. That is what your body needs but does not produce. So this is stuff we have to consume through our food or our diet, all right? And those, the, the, the things that are essentials are what we call the vitamins and minerals that we get from food. And when you look at those, there's two types of, of essential nutrients that we need to consume. Macronutrients and micronutrients. And we're going to briefly go through each one of these, right? Think macro is the big picture, right? Macronutrients are the big staple stuff. Like, so these are your carbohydrates, your fat, and your protein. The U.S. government says you should eat so much uh, for carbs every day, so, many, so much grams of fat, and so much protein based on your body type and size and style. Does that make sense? So that's the macronutrients, the bigger picture, right? That's the big stuff. And then we break it down from macro to micro. And the two types of micronutrients are going to be your vitamins and your minerals. These are the foods that you get all your, a lot of your, your main vitamins from right through here. Vitamins are like the vitamin A, vitamin B, all the different Bs, vitamin C, all those different things when you hear people talk about vitamins, those are micronutrients. And these four foods right here are the four groups that have the majority of all that in there if you're taking notes. So sweet potatoes, they're full of vitamins. Spinach and kale, full of vitamins. Almonds, full of vitamins. And your citrus fruits are full of vitamins as well. All right? That's where we should be getting a lot of that from. And then minerals... Your minerals are the bigger words, not just the vitamin C, B, C, or A. Your minerals are things like uh, uh, phosphorus, calcium, ladies, for your bones, uh, magnesium, all those different, those, those bigger, longer words, those are minerals. So that's the way to tell the difference. The, the longer words are always the minerals, right? That's how I learned it in school. And these are your four food, the four foods that have the most amount of minerals in there. Uh, salmon, your beans, your seeds. And, uh, and your avocados, right? So those are where we get a lot of minerals from if you don't take supplements. Those are the staple foods you should be eating for that, right? <clears throat> so if we know what we're eating, and we're eating all the right foods, and we know where to get our minerals and, and our, our vitamins from, we still have an issue, right? The issue is how we eat our foods before we get into the vitamins, right? Or the supplements, rather. And it's because the way they process our food, right? Every, the soil, you know, I hate to use this word, but the soil is raped from all the nutrients out of it, right? They just continuously grow cash crops over and over again, turn over two, three, four seasons a year when they should only be getting one season out. And by the time they get five years down the road, there's nothing left in the soil. And not to mention it pulls all the nutrients out so you no longer get it in the food. Even with organic food that ne that's never been sprayed or, or, or it's all natural, they still grow in soil that's been used over and over again without a crop on top of it to replenish those nutrients because of, of money and cost. And so even though you're getting organic food, you still don't get all the, the nutrients and vitamins you need from organic food. And sometimes, even though it says organic, guys, it's not. I mean, if you go to Whole Foods and they say organic watermelons, organic uh, fruits or peaches, have you ever seen organic fruit or peach that looks exactly perfect like all thousand of them stacked there, right? They say organic on them, but they look like they're genetically modified and they look like they're hand painted, they're so pretty. And we just fall in love, look at the size of these oranges. And we buy them and they say organic, but every single orange looks the exact same. And it's like they hand painted this stuff just to make it look good for us. And actually they do. They spray that stuff, they gas it to change the color to make it look good for you guys. And it's organic, but it's still gassed, okay? Uh, all the different pollution that's in your environment, right? Uh, the, the, all the pesticides, all the stuff that they spray on your food, uh, in, in preparing your food. And so by the time it gets to you, there's no nutrients or minerals left in it. And then the way we cook and prepare it in our country, it's always quick and easy. We microwave stuff, which kills everything in it, right? We overcook it because we've been taught that we can't eat something half raw because it's going to kill us because of whatever 
organisms out there, right? But when you overcook food, guys, you kill all the enzymes in it, you kill all the protein, you kill all the good stuff with it, and you're just eating something burnt is all you're doing, right? And so don't overcook your food. Don't be scared of catching something from undercooked food, right? right? And so we always overcook our food, right? And, it's, and when you go out to eat, everything's flash cooked these days. You know, I don't know if you realize or not, but a lot of the restaurant food you buy, the steak and all that stuff, it's actually pre-made already. Those lines on the steaks at Applebee's and places like that, it's pre-made. They just heat it up in the oven and they serve it to you. It's not grilled. I hope you realize that. They, they, they shove a bunch of, uh, a, a bunch of uh, filler in there to plump it up, make it nice and juicy, and they heat it up in a convection oven and they serve it to you guys. And you think it's fresh, fresh off the grill when it's not. Okay, A lot of restaurants do that for convenience. <clears throat> so... We're in such a hurry, we always eat all this junk food. While it, we love to eat it, it tastes great, right? You know, it's dense, you know, energy dense, uh, lots of carbs, lots of sugar, bad fats, processed, artificial sweeteners or anything, and we get this huge high from eating a donut. We feel great for five minutes because it tastes so good. The Krispy Kreme light was on, so I had to stop on the way home from work, <laughs> ate a dozen donuts and come home, come home and told the kids there was only six, right? That, that's how that works. And then you feel like doo-doo the rest of the night, right? Or, or, or I'm guilty of this. I eat a bowl of cereal at, at midnight, and I wake up the next day, guess how I feel? Horrible. Because I stole a bowl of cereal when my kids were asleep, right? And then I feel horrible the next day. Because we, we just we're poor diet because of convenience, right? <coughs> Mercy. So, so now that we know what the problem is, so what do we do? What should we take? How should we proceed with vitamins and minerals, right? So everybody hold five fingers. Five. So how many essentials are there? Five. Five. I always want to drill this into your guys' heads. I know this is a supplement and vitamin workshop. But if you don't have all, all five of these working together in synergy, you're sort of just spinning your wheel. You're like a rat on a wheel, running and running and running. Every single one of these is important. And we're going to focus on this in the, in the vitamins here in a moment. But if you don't have a proper functioning nervous system, you can't absorb the nutrition from the vitamins or supplements, right? If you don't have the right positive mindset and you're negative all the time and you think all health comes from the outside in versus the inside out, you're never going to get better, right? You're a Debbie Downer, right? No matter what we do or tell you, you're always going to be negative. It doesn't matter, right? So have the positive mindset. God made you perfect. You just got to get in the way. You got in the way. We got to get out of the way, right? Oxygen and exercise. You don't need to be in a gym, but you do need to get oxygen in your systems for, for your cells and muscles. And then we want to minimize those toxins. So we're going to spend most of our time right here and briefly touch this one or this one as we go through the, 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 excuse me, the, the vitamins and minerals there. All right. So, nutrition. When you are eating food before you go to supplements, make sure you're getting a balanced diet. This is common sense. But a lot of times we think uh, we just we sort of focus on one food group like just salad. And we think we're doing good because we're eating a bunch of salad, right? It, it's not healthy for you. You need all the different food groups in moderation. So, so just eat a balanced diet, obviously. Uh, when you are getting your, your minerals and vitamins from food, make sure it's as organic as it can be or you at least know where the source came from. Don't just buy a bunch of stuff because it looks good, right? Uh, you know, obviously stay away from antibiotic stuff, uh, hormone raised stuff, uh, GMO things, all those different things. If you're buying packaged stuff, look at the labels. If you're buying supplements and vitamins, look at the labels. I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, you'll be surprised. Some of you guys come in here with a shoebox full of uh, supplements, and, and you, you're so proud of yourself, and you spend $3 a month on vitamins, and I sit down with you, and I go through every single bottle, and 95% of it's junk, and you walk out of here like this. <laughs> and you just spent $300 on junk, right? So if that is you, I apologize. But if, if you're someone that takes all that stuff, bring it in with me. I love sitting down with you guys and going through that as long as we have time. And I'll go through your vitamins and supplements. It doesn't matter if it's mine or yours. I don't discriminate like that, so if you're, if you're happy with the brand you're taking, just bring that stuff in and I'll gladly go through it with you and make sure it's a good quality stuff and I'll show you what you're looking for, all right? Show you how to read these labels, all right? So, food, really quick, this is Stacy's area over here, but if you're eating healthy, core plan and advanced plan. Those, everybody's pretty much a patient here, you know what that means by now, if you don't, uh, you need to get with Stacy, but... Our advanced plan has a lot of those good quality foods you're looking for, and, uh, and our, so as our core plan does as well. So those are the two nutrition programs that we work with you guys. I just want to touch those. All right. So let's get into uh, to vitamins and nutrients. Uh, nutrients. Everybody, pull out uh, this right here, so you don't have to take notes. 
These are the top six things that the majority of us in the United States are deficient in. These are the top six vitamins and nutrients that we're deficient in. Calcium, vitamin D, iron, your B12, folate, and the magnesium. All right? That's what's on this sheet right through here on that front page. And so we simply lifted those down through here. All right? And then here's the people that are at risk. And then this is the signs of the deficiency right through there on the third column. So you don't have to take so many notes. You can just sort of look yourself up there, right? But these are the six main things that we all should be focused on other than everything else, right? Calcium. We think we need to get calcium from, uh, from dairy and milk and things like that. You get a heck of a lot more calcium from this stuff right through here, right? The broccoli, right? The green, the green cruciferous stuff, that's where you get a lot of calcium from, all right? People don't realize this, but salmon is a very, very high source of vitamin D. We look at salmon and think it's just protein or, or good fat because it's fish. You, vitamin D, uh, a, a, piece, a half a piece of salmon has like 800 units of vitamin D in it. It equivalents 800 units of vitamin D just by half of a piece of salmon. So that's a good source of vitamin D. Iron, you get a lot of iron from nuts and seeds and things like that. Uh, people think of protein and cholesterol in eggs, but actually eggs are a huge source of vitamin B12, right? That's where you get energy from. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this stuff right here, you guys know what that is? Asparagus. Asparagus, right? I hated asparagus for years until my wife convinced me to eat hers, right? She fries that asparagus up in coconut oil, right? With lots of salt and pepper and coconut oil. And then she takes like a whole stick of raw butter and sautés it, melts it on that, that asparagus. And it's like candy, guys. I love it, right? So if you don't like asparagus, get with my wife. She'll show you how to make that stuff, right? But she, she sautés it in coconut oil on the pan, and then she puts lots of melted raw butter on there because it's a good. those are two good fats to go on it. And so then you get all the folate that way, right? Uh, magnesium, avocados. You know, we love taking uh, liquid magnesium, which is good, but you can get lots of uh, magnesium from avocados. Uh, another one I don't like the taste of because I don't like the mushiness of it, but you know how she gets me to eat it? She chops up in small pieces, puts it in my tuna fish. And you can't even taste it, and it's amazing. It's just like sprinkled green in my tuna fish. And I eat it every week, and it's really, really good. So she gets all this stuff in me that way, all right? So those are your, your six deficiencies that we need to talk about, all right? All right, so supplementation. Remember this. Quality, not quantity. Write that down. Quality, not quantity. Right? You can go to Sam's Club and you can buy a big tub of, of omega-3 fish oil this big for two dollars. You know exactly, but you get the idea, right? And we're always we're shopping for quality and for quantity in our country. We want the le least amount of money for the most product. And it lasts you all year long and you spent ten dollars on it, you think you're doing amazing, right? And all you're doing is you're peeing that stuff out, and that's why your, your urine looks different colors sometimes, right? And so we want quality, not quantity, right? To give you guys an example of that is this. This is Centrum Silver. Raise your hand if you ever heard of Centrum Silver. Yeah, probably everybody. It is the most popular, uh, is the most popular men's and women's multivitamin on the market right now. It is the cheapest one, it is the most popular one, it's the, it's the one that most people consume. Everybody consumes it. This right here has all the stuff that your body needs, right? I'm not arguing with that, all right? But if you ever take up your Centrum Silver bottle and look at the other side of it, next to that in the very fine print, there's more fillers and more junk in Centrum Silver than any other vitamin on the market. So you are taking Centrum Silver thinking you're doing a great thing because it's a multivitamin and we need that, when reality is it's one of the worst ones on the market. If you, you can't even pronounce 90% of the stuff in the fine print right through there that says you always want to look at ingredients or other ingredients on your labels, not just what's in it, but what the other stuff is in it. This is all fillers to pump that stuff <coughs> up to make it look like you got a lot in there when you really don't have anything, right? If you look through some of this stuff, I mean, every single type of diet, yellow number six, all that stuff that you hear about that causes cancer and everything, it's all in Centrum Silver, right? Very, for seniors, you're worried about breaking a hip or osteoporosis. That's one of the most acidic vitamins you can take, Centrum Silver. And yet we all take it because it's marketed for us to purchase it all the time, right? 
And so you need a multivitamin, men's or women's or whatever the case is, and we're going to go through some of those. But what you want to do is make sure you always look at the, the small, fine print on the back of something. The less amount of ingredients, the better you are. It should have one or two things, at the, or three at the most. And the first thing should be like a primrose or something, which is the vegetable capsule it should be, and that should be an ingredient. That's it, all right? So look at all this when you get home on your stuff, all right? And, and on top of that, Centrum Silver is actually made and marketed uh, by Pfizer, all right? The big pharmaceutical company, all right? And do you guys know this is not even made in our country? Because if you make a vitamin or supplement in the United States, we have strict standards here that you have to follow, put quality stuff in there. But if they make it outside of our country, there's no standards out there. And they can put whatever the heck they want in there and whatever filler they want and put our label on it and then sit there and distribute it and sell it in our country. That makes sense to you guys? So you want stuff and not to be, you know, USA or whatever, but you want stuff that's been made in, in, in the United States because it's regulated. It's more regulated here than anywhere else, right? So look for that stuff, right? So when it comes to the multivitamins, we're going to go through these. Uh, we're going to go through vitamins one at a time in order of importance, right? So the first one we're going to talk about are the, are the multivitamins for men's and women's, right? Let me find those up here. So these these that I'm going through, everybody should take uh, at least as a minimum. I just have one. Okay, men's and women's, right? So if you look, or you got your glasses on, right? You see where it says other ingredients? You can't see that? Somebody got good eyes? You see that, Angie? You see where it says other ingredients? So how many ingredients are in there? One or two or three, something like that. How many ingredients are in there? Two? Okay, so, so yeah. yeah. Okay, but there's two or three ingredients in there. So when I say other ingredients, that's what you're looking for. There's like two in here, and the first one should be the type of capsule it's in. It should be a vegetable capsule, not a plastic capsule made in China somewhere that stores your gut lining, okay? Uh, so that's what you're looking for. The men's, the reason why men should take the vitamins, the multivitamin, it has all those, those things we talked about that we're deficient in, but it's also got things like salt, palmetto, all those things that we focus on with prostate health guys. That's why you should take a men's multivitamin. The women, same stuff, but it's formulated a little bit differently. Uh, women's multivitamins, you want, they want to be, you want them to be very alkaline with lots of stuff that makes your body alkaline, and you want to make sure it talks about breast health, uh, uh, hormones and, and uh, things like and bone health on your on your labels because that's what your big you guys' biggest worry is when you get older, right? The bone health, osteoporosis, and breast health, right? So when you're looking for a, a multivitamin, make sure that's what you look for, right? Through there, okay? Any questions about multivitamins before I go on to uh, the next most important thing? No? All right? Second thing is B complex, all right? We all should be taking a B complex because your B vitamins are very, very important for digestion, right? You, can, you cannot absorb iron in your gut, uh, and, and therefore a lot of us are iron deficient if you don't have the proper amount of B-complex vitamins, right? B-complex gives your gut what it needs to digest and process and absorb iron. That way you're not deficient in iron, you're not anemic, right? Your B vitamins also help reproduce and help with nerve endings. So people that are uh, have neuropathy, numbness and tingling, all those different things, the B vitamins are very, very important to you guys as well. People that are, are tired and lethargic all the time, you need to take the B vitamins too because the B vitamins help your body absorb ATP, which is the body's energy source. So that's why you should take a B complex, right? And it says delayed release there uh, because of this. A lot of times we'll take a B complex vitamin and we get this quick hit from it because we feel good because we just took some B and it gives us the energy from the nice and we feel great. And then we sort of have a crash. It's because your body quickly absorbs all that once it gets in the gut. So you want something with delayed release, meaning it takes a while to leach back out into your system. So it's a 24-hour absorption, which you take every day, versus one time you feel good for two hours and then you crash again. Does that make sense? Right? It's the same, same concept as, the, uh, as uh, B12. You know, everybody's heard of the B12 shots we get, right? When we're talking about B vitamins, uh, this is called B total. It's a sublingual B that we take a lot of here in our in our office. You can spend twenty, thirty dollars, or forty dollars on a shot of B twelve, uh, or you can buy a two month supply of the exact same stuff for eighteen dollars. <laughs> okay, just it's a no brainer, right? And, we, and there's two there's two actually two bottles in here, and it's a liquid. Uh, it's eighteen bucks for a, for a two month supply, and you simply do a shot of it on your tongue. It's the exact same thing they stick you in your tail with to give you energy, and they charge you thirty, forty bucks, and you got a bruise after the shot, right? Just just take you have a two month supply for a third of the price, right? 
Uh, just make sure if you're taking B, the, the B total for energy, you shake it because it's got niacin in it and I've made the mistake in a hurry in taking a big squig of it under my tongue without shaking it and it makes you have this red flush like you're sunburned because of the niacin content because it sort of jacks you up really, really quick and it causes a niacin flush. So if you're taking B complex for energy, uh, you know, you can take it multiple times a day. Just make sure you shake it first when we're talking about B vitamins. Same stuff as the shot, all right? So B complex. Any questions about the B vitamins before I move on? Nope? All right. Um, is yes. there B12 in the B complex too? Yes, yeah. ma'am, there is. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's not as concentrated. It's not as concentrated. Would you there. get enough of it? From the B complex? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Unless you're somebody that's tired all the time and you need a quick pick me up, okay. that's what this is for. This I use this as a quick pick me up. Uh, so I've, I've seen 150 people in one day and I got a workshop to do and I'm exhausted. <laughs> I reach behind the counter and do a, do a shot of it just to give me a quick so pick me up. You can do that and the B complex? Yes, ma'am, you can. Yep. And there, there's a little trick about this, not to get too far off, but since you're asking questions, if you take this, and you mix it with a whole, uh, with a, a vitamin C or a whole chewable C, it actually gives you a euphoric feeling uh, and does the same thing like uh, antidepressants in, in, a, in, in, a, in a depression medication does. All right, just as a side note, right? Uh, is that a daily thing? <clears throat> you can take it several times a day, but if you take one, one shot a day, it lasts you two months because there's two bottles in there. That's the way that works. Uh, and actually, while I'm talking about that, we're talking about depression and anxiety. Really quick. Uh, there's a lot of people that are depressed and have, have anxiety for whatever reason, and there's something. Sneaky move. Right. Right, everybody write this down. 5-HTP. Especially if you know somebody that uh, has anxiety and depression. 5-HTP. I want you guys to Google that, not now when you go home. 5-HTP, uh, which uh, does the exact same thing your anxiety and depression medication does. Exact same thing. So if I throw it away, I can start taking it? Yes, ma'am. That's what we're getting to, right? So if I'm going to tell you how, so just don't quit cold target because depression medication is strong, right? And so what happens, depression medication works by uh, forcing your body to absorb the serotonin out of your gut into your brain because it doesn't do that right now for whatever reason, right? And so that's how depression medication works. But the problem is we know a depression or anxiety medication, you have lots of side effects like it makes you tired, moody, all that other good stuff, right? Well, bad stuff. And so, if you take 5-HTP, it does the exact same thing without any of the side effects, all right? So, instead of taking this and a C, you can literally just take this right through here, and it does the exact same thing as the depression and anxiety, and it's taking one thing versus having to take a couple things to do that, all right? Uh, and you asked about stopping and starting. So, the way you do that, because some depression and anxiety medication is very strong and it's addictive, what you want to do is when you start with that, you want to take it for two weeks while you take your medication. So you ramp it up in your system. And then over the next two to four to six weeks, as you feel comfortable, you wean down off that anxiety depression medication while you're taking that. So you're sort of split, tricking the brain and you're going from this to that, that to this. Does that make sense to you guys? And so you don't want to stop it cold turkey because after about a week, you'll go through withdrawals from your other medication. Uh, so you ramp it up for two weeks and then you slowly over the next two to four to six weeks, like, Take half your medication every day for two weeks and then go down every three days for two or four weeks and as long as you don't notice that big difference and then eventually you wean yourself off and you can take that as the exact same thing. All right? How often do you take that? Ma'am, you take this every day. Yep. Take that every day. Yep. Not the, the C and the B though. If you no, if you take the C and the B together, that's just for a quick pick me up type thing. Does oh, that make okay. sense? So you're having a you're, you're having a depressed week because it's hard anniversary, something that causes those troubled thoughts to come back in your mind, and so you can do that for a weekend or, or a week and sort of gets you through that. If that makes sense, yeah. But that's that's a lot easier just to do the sleep and move. All right, but that's five HTP. All right. <clears throat> Opto omega. Uh, you guys know what I think about fats. Everybody should do lots of fats. Uh, the good fats, uh, where we're so bombarded with uh, fish oil and omega threes and all that stuff, and we, that's one of the most common ones everybody takes. But we, what most people don't realize is you have a lipid bilayer, meaning two layers of fat around every cell, and you need sixes and threes to open and close that cell because lipid means fat, bilayer means two layers, right? And so when you just take a bunch of omega threes like most fish oil is that you purchase at Costco or Sam's Club or whatever. It's just a bunch of omega-3s. And that's okay taking that for a short period of time if you're really, really deficient in fat. But you want to take an omega-6 and 3 combined together, like a 1 to 2 or 2 to 1 ratio. 
That way you can absorb all those threes and sixes together because your cell needs both of those type of fats to open to allow the ATP, which is energy in those. Does that make sense? And so when you're taking fish oil, uh, make sure it's something like Octo Omega that has the sixes and threes and all that other good stuff in there at the proper ratios. That's what we're looking for, okay? All right. So what kind of fat should we be instead of that? A fish? How much? How, how much? So you could you should have your diet 75% good fat. Right. Yes, ma'am. Coconut oil, olive oil, <laughs> fish. Uh, I'm, I'm a big advocate of eating good old-fashioned steak and, and raw meat, all right, as long as it's been uh, grass-fed, not grain-fed. I try to eat steak several times a week. I, I mean, I, I love meat. Uh, there's people that say red meat's bad for you. It is bad for you because of the way it's processed. But if you eat the unprocessed red meat that hasn't been raised on grain and, and a corn and all that stuff, actually red meat's very, very good for you. Right? It's good for the heart, not bad for the heart. The reason why we say it's bad for the heart is because it's inflammatory, and the only reason why it's inflammatory is because all the grain that they used to raise that cow, if that makes sense to you guys. So grass-fed is great for you. Eat, eat it all day long, right? That's a good source of fat. Yes, sir. Um, the two-to-one ratio, that's mm -hmm. twice as much omega-6 as three? Yeah, you can, it can go both ways. You just need a one-to-one -one or two-to-one or, or one-to-two ratio. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Some products have it up. Uh, Twice the amount of sixes, some people have it twice the amount of threes, some of it's one to one. It's always changing with whatever the, the, the market calls uh, for, but okay. it's just a one to one or two to one ratio. Either way, it's fine. Okay. It used to be 25 to one, and then they realized, hey, we're, we're taking too much omega sixes, and so we need to have less of that because the standard person in our country has a 50 to one ratio of omega sixes to omega threes. That's why they tell you to take a lot of omega threes because we have so many sixes in the type of food that we eat this process. All right? Never <laughs> even <laughs> struck gold. <laughs> Any questions on fat and optimal omega before I? I yes, ma'am. How about cheese in yes. the fat line? Is there good cheese? That's yeah, just as raw, raw, organic, natural cheese you can get. All right, uh, anything blocks better than anything sliced. Kerrygold's great. I've actually been over there to Kerrygold myself, actually. Okay. And you know, uh, over there, when me and Stacey and I went over there, it was funny. That stuff's everywhere over there. Kerrygold's everywhere over there when we went, went over the, overseas. And, but it's not labeled as organic or natural or anything like that. It's just standard for them. And, uh, but in our country, they put a new label on it. They call it organic <laughs> in, in full fat or whatever. That way we'll pay more money for them. But over there, it's just normal. Well, that's it's really good cheese. Hmm? Isn't it pasteurized? Some, some of it is, yes, ma'am. But you want the good fat. So what, well, thanks for bringing that up, Trudy. Uh, so dairy traditionally is pasteurized, right? And when you pasteurize anything, it kills all of the enzymes in it. And that's why we're lactose intolerant, okay? Because God didn't make us to, uh, the enzymes in us to, uh, to, to process dairy, all right? So but when you eat raw dairy, or as raw as you can get, or partially pasteurized or micro-pasteurized or whatever, it still has some of those... Uh, so some of those enzymes in it, okay, and that's why we can digest it. So I'm lactose intolerant. You've heard me say this before. If I drink milk, I'm going to blow the sheets up and Stacey's going to kick me out of bed, right? It's bad. It's bad. But if I drink raw dairy or some raw processed cheese or unprocessed cheese, it doesn't bother my stomach at all, right? So I can eat it all day long. Yes, sir. Isn't that mainly European cheese? It's imported. Uh, so cheese, why you think of that? Uh, where does cheese come from, or is it just mainly, which are mainly from Europe or Europe? It's better for you. Yeah, yeah, it's, everything's better outside the United States. And, and what's made in the United States for it would be the best. Yeah, exactly. Think, actually, no. So let me tell you about cheese. I have a uh, brother-in-law, Stacy's little brother. He works for the largest cheese manufacturer in the country, up in Tennessee. They get these giant blocks of cheese on a, on a giant pallet like this tall and this big, this, like a big square of cheese. They get that shipped into their manufacturing place in, ten, in the hills of Tennessee. And all the cheese in our country comes from the exact same manufacturer. They just put a different label on it. So the Kraft Singles, the Walmart brand, the Boris Head, whatever you get is all from the same manufacturer, just with a different label stuck on it. They cut it and they process it and they, they put something in or on it based on what the manufacturer wants, the Boris Head or whoever, or less product. And therefore, 90% of the, the cheese you guys buy, you spend $10 for this package and $2 at Walmart for this package, and it's the exact same cheese. <laughs> it is. 
that's what he does for a living. Is he slices that cheese and he packages it. He's a supervisor for that company that does that. It's an interesting fact about cheese. <laughs> um, what's the best source for the grass-fed beef? Uh, local, and then when you ask your farmer, if you have to ask the farmer when you buy it at the farmer's market or local market, has it been grass finished? That's the key word there. Everybody will say grass fed, right? Because they fed it some grass. They're, they're not lying. But the last 90 days, it was raised on grass. But then the last 90 days, they shucked it full of corn and grain, and they fattened it up to go to market, and they don't tell you it was grain finished. Does that make sense to you guys? And so you want to ask the farmer if it's been grass or grain finished. So you have to go direct to farm, like grocery store. No, you can not. actually say, so where do we get ours from? Costco? Uh, the ground beef, we yeah. get it at Publix. Publix, okay. The wheat we store, we get ours from Publix. Strauss' main brand is they, it's grass fed. What's it called? Strauss, S-T-R-A-U-S-S. -S. I have it. Look it up. Strauss. Strauss, S-T-R-A-U-S, Strauss. -T -R -A -U -S, Strauss. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the brand we use personally, okay? Uh, same thing, when we're talking about meat guys, same thing, uh, we, get a, we, we get our chicken from, is it Costco? Chicken? Costco? I don't, I don't get any meat from Costco. Everything goes to Publix. Publix? Oh, <laughs> you see why I don't shop. <laughs> <laughs> any other questions about meat or dairy or fat before we move on? Yes, ma'am. When they say that there's no hormones in the chickens, does that mean they were um, free range? Yes, but you know what free range is? Free range. The definition of free, free range is 12 by 12. 12 by 12. They're free range. All around. No joke. It's free range. <laughs> That's a small range. Sir? Venison? Venison is great for you. I love venison. Yep. We, we, we eat lots of venison. I mean, think about it. A deer is in nature. They're just eating... What God created and put out there for them. I mean, there's nothing wrong with venison, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, free range chicken is just 12 by 12 inches. Not 12 by 12 inches, okay? Uh, hmm? What about organic? Organic chicken means they just didn't put hormones in it, but they can still put other stuff in it. How do you buy chicken? Yeah. Chicken. The best way you can, organic free. You want to look for, say, so what type of chicken we use? It says organic and antibiotic free on it, right? Yes, and you get, uh, Purdue is a name brand that's Purdue. common around the Purdue, P U R D U E E. Um, there's also Springer Farms, it's actually very local. They're, they're probably like maybe an hour away from here. So that's generally what we'll get. There's Springer Farms, I've seen it at some of the other local grocery stores, but they do have it there at Publix generally. That's where I shop is Publix or Ingalls most times. It will say antibiotic free on it. Is that the green wise? Free range, stuff like that. Um, sometimes read the green wise, because that's one thing I, write, I really like about Publix is because they have that green wise name brand, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be the Publix name brand, but it's the um, more alternative source being more organic, more cleaner meat and stuff too. So. Definitely, if you're going to Publix, look for the green wise because most always that's that's a thumbs up in that case. Simpsonville um, at the park there, mm -hmm. they have a, um, a farmer that comes, mm -hmm. and you can order your meat, yep. your chicken, everything, and it's all green fed. Good, good, green grass fed. <laughs> all right. So the next thing, guys, the next thing is uh, pro magnesium. All right. Remember, one of the six things we were deficient in was magnesium. All right. You guys remember the foods you eat to get lots of magnesium? Avocado. Good deal. All right. So there are a couple things about magnesium. Magnesium sort of calms things down. Yes, it's a laxative as well. Okay. Uh, we recommend you do a liquid magnesium. All right, that you can shake, it's liquid, because that way your, your gut can absorb it better and it's not a, a hard thing, all right, like, like most magnesium. So you want to take a liquid magnesium. Magnesium is good for a couple things. It's good for regulating blood pressure. It's, a, it's good for regulating uh, blood sugar. It's good for uh, getting rid of cramps and muscle issues and things like that. It's good for people that can't sleep at night. Uh, my wife and I, actually Stacy more than me because I had a bad experience, but uh, <laughs> Stacy more than me, uh, she drinks a teaspoon of magnesium every night before she goes to bed. Because her mind's always racing with stuff that our kids and grandkids and everybody's doing, right? And so she can't shut off. And so she simply has this on her nightstand, and she does a teaspoon of it every night before bed. And what it does, it's, it's, it relaxes everything, so it calms the brain, it relaxes the muscle, and it helps you do a deep sleep. So she does magnesium every night. 
Just make sure, though, and I've, I've told this funny story before, make sure you do no more than a teaspoon. Okay? <laughs> because magnesium is a laxative. If you do two teaspoons or you swig it like I thought I would be in a hurry because I'm a man, <laughs> at two, 2 in the morning, you're blowing black. That's all I'm going to say, right? So just be careful with that. <laughs> Sir, when you no, no, this was one one of the bases when you started. No, sir, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the that's liquid magnesium there. Okay. Any questions on magnesium before we move on? No. All right. Uh, a quick thing on, on magnesium because I don't know if I'll talk about calcium. Uh, for those of you, for ladies that are worried about a uh, uh, osteoporosis and, and taking lots of calcium, you can't absorb calcium on its own. You need magnesium with it. All right. So if you're taking a bunch of calcium or something like that, you're not absorbing it, and that's why you still are developing osteoporosis, right? And no matter how much you take. So when you do calcium, for those ladies out there that worry about osteoporosis, you need to do a calcium and magnesium together. It's called CalMag. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. C-A-L-M-A-G, one-to-one. CalMag is what you need for osteoporosis, ladies, all right? Would you not take the magnesium then with that? Ma'am? Don't take the magnesium then? You can, but take it for different reasons. Okay, you're going to get lots of you're going to get magnesium out of that if you're deficient in it. Don't get me wrong, but if you want it for relaxation, sleeping, mm -hmm. then you take the liquid because it's like uh, it's something about how it coats your stomach at night and it causes everything to relax. It's like drinking warm milk before you go to bed. How do you get calcium then? Hmm? How do you get the calcium? It's calcium. calcium, magnesium. So you take both. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. if, if you're deficient in calcium, yes. Is that magnesium? Cal calcium, magnesium, and one. Good calcium. question. Amen. Maybe in the morning, and then the magnesium at night. What is the liquid? No, it's not citrate. It's, uh, no, it's, a it's, it's the other one. I, I can't yet. Yeah. Can, you, can you read it? <laughs> it's the other one. That's Mally. Mally, yeah, exactly. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the, it's the other one. All right. Because, yeah, one's very, very sick. You're right. All right. So, any questions about magnesium? Nope. All right. Vitamin C. Uh, everybody should take vitamin C, obviously, because it's good for what? Your immune system and your bones, right? Ladies, did you know uh, the, the, the number one ingredient for that your skin needs to make collagen is what? Vitamin C. We think of vitamin C just as something we need to boost our immune system and things like that and keep us healthy when we get sick. But actually, your body uses, your skin uses vitamin C for collagen. So that therefore, you don't get the, so many wrinkles and things like that. For those of you worried about wrinkles as you get older, take lots of vitamin C. It keeps that, that skin nice and toned, all right? So vitamin C is very important for things other than just the, uh, the, the immunity like we think, all right? <clears throat> I'm doing great on time here. Good deal. So these are the five key things that are the basic things I just talked about before we'll get into some, some other things. Your, your multivitamin, men's or women's, the B-complex, the pro-magnesium, the vitamin C, and the optimal omega. So those are the five things that you guys see I have listed here to make it so easy for you. Right through there? Those are those five things. If you need all five of those, you get 15% off. If you don't need all five of them, you just need one or two, you get 10% off. We make it easy that way. All right? So any questions about those before I go on to some other things? Nope. Good deal. All right. Do you have the optimal... Omega in smaller pills? No, <laughs> I get that question all the time. <laughs> you can cut it in half and pour it in oatmeal. <laughs> we, we just got to cram that fat in there, okay? And I'm glad you said talking size. Guys, size. When you purchase vitamins and supplements and you read the label that says the recommended dosage, it's based on about a 175-pound person, right? So if you're more than that, you need to take more. If you're a lot less than that, you need to take less. Does that make sense? So, it, so I just say 200 pounds just to be on the safe side. So if you're 200 pounds or less, take what it says. If you're three or 400 pounds, like a lot of people are, then you need to take twice as much or, or one and a half times as much. So you're getting that with the, the, the certain the parts you need, right? So that's, I'm glad you brought the, the size things up, right? Does your daily defense have C in it? Ma'am? Does the daily defense have C in it? The daily defense. For, no ma'am, the daily defense you talk about for uh, for inflammation, arthritis, and stuff like that, that's what the daily defense does. Oh, okay. Yeah. The daily defense, since you brought it up, this is, uh, for those of you that have lots of stress and free radical damage or inflammation in your joints from arthritis, daily defense is your best friend, right? That's going to help the inflammation in your arthritis and your joints and things like that, all right? There may be, I, I should have brought my glasses, there may be some C in there, but I don't think there is. No, not the deadly offense. But that's for mainly for arthritis and free radical damage for those of you that are stressed all the time. Right? Does, does the multivitamin not have enough C in it? Uh, 
Uh, not necessarily. It's, it's got. It's got. Uh, I think. I think it's got a hundred something. I don't know. You don't have my glasses. Yeah. I know you need at least a thousand milligrams of C a day. A thousand milligrams is what you want for C. I know that's what's in that one. The multivitamin. Where is it? It's, can you look? <laughs> How much C is in there? 100 milligrams, so it doesn't have nowhere near a thousand. That's why that's why I have the, the recommended C for a thousand milligrams, right? Some other good things that are common, but not everybody needs them, are is the daily defense. We just talked about that for arthritis or people that have lots of uh, stress and free radical damage. Uh, the protein, grass-fed protein. Uh, we have a plant protein. If you don't like the dairy part, uh, if you if you're like me, I go one step higher and I go to the pure path protein, which is bone broth protein because it is better on my stomach because it's not dairy. And so that's the one I take is the the pure path protein, which is bone broth protein. It's a little bit more, but it's better on my stomach. Uh, if you don't like dairy, again, there's the, the plant protein that's my wife takes, and then uh, the whey protein and chocolate and vanilla, and you can take that as well for those of you that dairy doesn't bother you, right? Uh, another thing for you guys that don't like to eat lots of vegetables, Max Greens, right? You can just get your greens by drinking them. Uh, Stacy gets these in my shake. She makes my shake and she puts a scoop of Max Greens in there or, or, or the other type of greens we have, and I don't even notice it, and they just go right in my shake in the morning, right? For a diabetic, which is the best one. And the protein, you mean? Uh, actually, any. Actually, I would say the, the bone broth because it's more pure. Okay, but any one of these is good because there's no sugar in it, and it hasn't been. Uh, it hasn't been what we call uh, undenatured. Un it's it's undenatured. So when you something's called denatured, it's been pasteurized, and it kills all the protein it, protein molecules in there. And you go to Costco or Simple, and you buy a big tub of protein for like 20 bucks, but it's been pasteurized, and so you can't absorb any of it. So anything that's undenatured or hasn't been pasteurized, like any of our proteins, you, diabetics can use that. But the, uh, the pure path is the best for diabetics, right? for your digestive system, right? Uh, and then the detox. Uh, most of you guys know what the detox is. If you're a patient of mine, I'll start you off on detox. You know that, right? We want to we wanna make sure we get all that bad junk out of ourselves so we're absorbing all this good stuff, right? Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to open it up now for questions on any type of other condition or supplement you have any questions about. Anybody? Have, yes, ma'am. What do you think about turmeric? Turmeric? Great. Uh, turmeric, I'm glad you brought that up. You should get it from your food if you're eating uh, Indian food. Something. We go to Indian food every, every week and get it from that way. Uh, we have something here. We have inflammatone. The inflammatone has turmeric in it, and then the daily defense that uh, Kara was just asking about. Man, pretty much stuff. Those are the two big ingredients in these two things. Inflammatone is used as like a to replace uh, uh, to replace Advil or Tylenol. You take it as needed. It does the same thing but stronger, right? Uh, if you want to take something every day as a, a maintenance type thing, you do the daily defense to get rid of the inflammation and the noise. As needed, yeah, yeah. So when you're having a bad day, if your knees are hurt because the weather's changing, you pop two to four of those, right? But that's those are the ingredients. Curmin and, and turmeric are the ingredients of those two. Just one has a little bit more than the other. Yes, sir. The max fit and max. Max fit and max DI. Yeah. All right. So max fit is for those of you that want to pick me up or energy. All right. This is going to be your green your green coffee bean extract and your ashwagandha that Dr. Axe talks about all the time. And so you take three of these a day. I don't recommend you take three at one time because it'll give you the jitters. It's like woo, right. And so you take one three times a day: breakfast, lunch, dinner. It speeds up your metabolism. Right? So if you're somebody that's tired or you want to burn fat or you're an athlete, a lot of athletes take Max Fit. That's why it's called Max Fit. Uh, but it speeds up metabolism is what it does. It's ashwagandha and green coffee bean extract. Weight loss? Yes, because it speeds up your metabolism. It'll help you with weight loss, yes. But you shouldn't take a pill to lose weight. That's the <laughs> And then you asked about Max GI. Uh, Max GI has all the things you need to help repair your gut. So if you're somebody that has IBS or digestive issues, uh, Max GI would really, really help that, right? Uh, but so you guys know, 90% of gut issues is from your stress, right? IBS is just is, is stress, and you express it in your gut. So if you just get rid of your stress in your life or your whatever you worry about all the time, a lot of your gut issues will actually go away. For those of you that have cramps and things like that, so just get rid of the stress, and the IBS goes away. But Max GI is helped. It's like, look at Max GI as probiotics and essential oils combined for the gut, 
that makes sense to you guys, right? Yeah. All right. And when we're talking about probiotics, uh, 50 billion is a good number for people with gut issues. Uh, D3, which you guys got when you started, has 10 billion uh, units of D3 in there. It has 10 billion uh, 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 probiotics in there. But the mainly the 10 billion probiotics is for the digestion of all the, the high dose of vitamin D3 we give you at one time. So if you, have, if you want to take stuff for gut probiotics, you want to do the 50 billion, which is five times as, as more, if that makes sense. All right? Okay, now if you're taking a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. to get your body where it needs to be, mm -hmm. How do you need to take it? Are you going to be taking pills all day long, or can you just nope. put them all together? And I put all mine together at one time. Oh, I'm that guy. Okay. <laughs> I'm that guy. Stacy's that girl. I mean, you, you know, it will say take with food, take without food, take three times a day. I'm that guy that doesn't have time to do that, and it's like in a pile, and I just suck them all down with, with, with some water or my shake, and then I'm gone. Okay. If it says take at night, I still take it in the day. <laughs> That's just not oh my God. <laughs> the only thing you don't want to take with your medications is the detox. And you want to wait 30 minutes to an hour after you take your prescriptions because it will recognize your prescription as something bad and foreign and it will try to suck it up. Well, usually I do the AM mm -hmm. as soon as I wake up. Yep. Yep. And then I wait an hour before I do anything else. Usually yeah. I do my other mm -hmm. vitamins and all. And then I'll wait an hour and do my prescription. Medicine. There you go. You're exactly right. Right, right. Good deal. And yes, hang on. I'll treat So you take them all once you take the activated. No, 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 I don't do the detox all the time like okay. Stacy does. Yeah. I take the detox uh, three months on and three months off. Stacy does it every night or every day. Yeah, because there's two parts, morning and evening. When I do do the detox, I do the evening when I go to bed at night. It's, it's on the, she puts it on my nightstand with a glass of oh, with a bottle of water, and I take it as I lay in bed at what night. What would you do without Stacy? She keeps me going. <laughs> She's been taking care of me since 10th grade. <laughs> She taught me all this stuff about this stuff. That's why she's here, in case I forget. <laughs> I see her weapon. I just like to talk more than she does. That's why you have to listen to me all the time. So with the detox, the PM, you just take it before you go like an hour before bed? No, you take it when you go to bed. It okay, says that, but I, I leave it on my nightstand. Well, she puts it on my nightstand when it's my time to take it, and I just, <laughs> just do two pills and go to bed. So you take that 30 minutes after you've taken your medication? Yeah, the, 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 the morning part, because it uh, when you take your prescriptions, uh, the, the, the body knows it's toxic even though it's helping you for whatever reason. And the stuff that, that's in the detox, it's the building blocks of glutathione, which is what God gave you to detox your cells naturally. You just overuse the glutathione because you were too toxic. So if you take your medications in the evening before you go to bed. It's okay. That's okay because of the other part. I'm but the, other, the, the morning part, you want to take 30 minutes to an hour. Because it's basically just the building blocks of natural detox. None of this stuff you see up here is any type of... Foreign man-made chemical. It's all natural stuff, so it doesn't affect anything. I'm sorry. Yeah. Explain the difference in cell and body detox. The cell is the morning. Right? A.M. Yes, ma'am. And that's why you need to take it separate. So, mm -hmm. what exactly is it doing versus what? The so, body in the the cell is glycine, lysine, and all those different scenes, Those those fancy terms that are the building blocks of glutathione. So that's giving your body what it needs to make glutathione naturally to detox your cells. Right? That's the, that part. The, 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 the body part is what you take at night, which is like an activated carbon or charcoal, whatever you want to call it. So it absorbs all that stuff that's going around in your bloodstream. It absorbs it. Because when you detox, we take a bunch of detox, and then it just stays in our bloodstream, and then we reabsorb it. So when you take a two-part, it actually absorbs out of the bloodstream, puts it through your kidneys, and when you get up in the morning and you pee, you pee it out that way. That's why you pee a lot on detox in the morning. So that's why you should drink lots of water, by the way, when you do detox. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, what about the new thing with elderberry syrup? That's great. We grow our own elderberries, and Stacy makes elderberry syrup. <laughs> that's good. We have an elderberry bush that we harvest every year. Yep. Say so want to comment on that? Yeah, um, it just helps to boost your immune system. So if you start feeling like you're uh, fixing to catch a cold or maybe everybody else in the household is starting to get the sniffles and you just want to kind of hit a barrier, uh, we'll, take, we'll, we'll take some of that. Just make sure when you buy one, it, you, the number one ingredient is not high fructose corn syrup because the stuff's bitter on its own. And if you buy one, it's, it says high fructose corn syrup and it's, it's sweet and it's just sugar is all it is with a little bit of elderberry. <laughs> So make it or, or buy it or just, you can buy an elderberry bush all day long and plant it and just harvest it and you just squash it down and, and then you go. I mean, that's, we, uh, we make, 
I don't know if I tell you guys this, but we make uh, we make mead, which is honey wine. You know, that I did way back in the days, and that's our main ingredient. Other than honey, we put elderberry in there, so it's like a wine that's actually good for you. So, I'm not, I don't drink all the time, but when I drink, I drink my own homemade wine. So we make it. it's, it's from honey because we raise honeybees as well, so we just make it that way. Yes, ma'am. So, and, and also, you need to pace that away from your vitamins as well. Breakfast vitamins. When you're detox. taking that that morning detox. No, ma'am, because the morning detox is a vitamin itself. Okay. Yeah. It, it, you know, when you take that, so you can take whatever. The only thing you got to stay vitamins. away from is the prescription medication okay. because it's artificial and it's going to say, "Hey, that's a gotcha. foreign thing. I'm going to suck it up." All right. Yeah. Yes, sir. How do you determine that that you could be allergic to any of those? For example, yeah. I'm allergic to insects. So basically, I did not take any pain medicine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm supposed not to drink or take turmeric. Right. Yeah. Turmeric, uh, the other day we uh, we, were, we had uh, tea or something like that. And it had turmeric. And it turmeric said, <laughs> and it said uh, allergic to, people allergic to aspirin should yeah. not take turmeric. Yeah. And you, if you know you're allergic to it, you just got to read the label and see what act, the ingredient is. It's like, uh, there, I have a couple things that have turmeric in them, like the, uh, the inflammatome, the daily defense, it says it right on there. So always read the labels and things like that. So in case of the vitamins, it would also say a... a yeah, yeah. Medication. So if it's made in the United States, it has to list it. If it's made outside of the United States, it won't. That's why I encourage you to get stuff that's made in the U.S. And you always want to look at what we call the other ingredients, and it will tell you that under other ingredients right there. If it has turmeric in it, if it's a filler or something like that, and it's not one of the main listed items. So always look for the other ingredients. All right, is what you want to look at. That's what we talked about in the beginning. All right? Any other questions on vitamins? Yes, ma'am. Can you just briefly touch on berberine? Because yes. That's, oh, yes. That's a good one. Berberine balance. Uh, for type 2 diabetics, that your sugar is not coming down fast enough, berberine balance does the exact same thing as metformin and insulin does. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Just without the side effect. How much do you have to type on it? Uh, two. I think it's two, right? So my eyes, tell me. I think it's two. Stacy, next time let's show his glasses. You so, so how does that work? And the insulin? Yep. It says one capsule. One capsule, then. I would take two, though, if you're trying to wean off something else. So the way bourbon balance works is this. It does the same thing insulin does, okay, and it does the same thing metformin does. But what you don't want to do is stop your metformin or insulin all at one time if you're taking both of those or either one of those. You take berberine balance for two weeks, just like we talked about 5-HTP and the depression thing. You take that for two weeks, and then after two weeks, you, you cut your, if you're taking insulin, you cut it down three to five units uh, a week just to see how you respond. Does that make sense? If you're taking metformin, you cut it down 250 to 500 uh, gr uh, uh, units of, of milligrams of metformin. So you don't stop it cold turkey. You ramp up for two weeks. And then you slowly, you track yourself coming down three to five units of insulin, uh, 250 to 500 milligrams of metformin, and you do that for two weeks. On you, you decrease two weeks, go two weeks without doing anything. Don't even worry about checking your sugar because it's going to go up or down for two weeks. And then at the end of two weeks, it stabilizes. That's why you do it for two weeks. See what the numbers look like. As long as they look good, you, you cut it down again for another two weeks. And over a six to eight week period, you wean off those medications that way. Slowly, every two weeks, checking it to see. Give, the body needs two weeks to sort of catch up and stabilize because you have all that stuff built up in you, especially insulin. Right? So for those of you that have a big belly from your insulin because it's called insulin gut and you don't like the way insulin makes you swell up, Berberine balance is, is, is a good way to get rid of that belly. All right? Let me get, let me get with you one-on-one -on -one more time. Because okay. I also take shots. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. And how, how do you spell that word? Berberine. B-E-R-B. -E -B. And we have it over on the shelves, Frankie, but it's B-E-R-B-E-R-I-N-E. -E -E, berberine and balance. There's a ton of different berberines on the market. Again, just make sure you get a good quality one. I like berberine balance because it has both <laughs> things in there. And again, I don't have my glasses, but it's got the two things that replace metformin and insulin. It's not just one of them. A lot of them just replace the insulin component. They don't replace the metformin and the insulin. But the balance, berberine balance from Douglas, Douglas Labs has both of those ingredients in there. Right. And, Thank you, and that, taking that berberine, I don't know how many guests are in here, but that's one of the, we don't recommend just taking the berberine and throwing your other, self, your other, metformin yeah. and everything away. That's a combination that our patients use to help lower their blood sugar. 
along with the five essentials. With yeah, the while plans, they're on that journey. While, yeah, yeah. While, so that's not going to cure your diabetes. Yes, but the, if you're a guest, all so the five essentials, the adjustments, the nutrition, the mindset, mm -hmm. all the stuff that we teach you guys, that's what's going to reverse the diabetes, not just the pill. Because right? mm -hmm. if you just take the pills, they can take the pill you already take. Exactly. Right? The, the goal is to get off the pills. All right? Any other questions before, we, uh, before I let you guys go? This is after seven. Nope. What about iron? You haven't discussed it yet. I'm sorry. I, I didn't talk about iron. Yes, iron's very important. But if you were deficient in iron, Ronnie, you can't just take a bunch of iron because you're not going to absorb it because you're already deficient in it. You're not absorbing it to begin with. And so what you want to do is take the B-complex. That's why we, I, I meant to, to talk about that, and I didn't want to talk about B-complex. Your B-complex vitamins are what allows your gut to absorb iron out of the foods you eat. If you're deficient in iron, your doctor says you need to take an iron supplement, don't because you're, you're not absorbing it to begin with. So what makes you think you're going to absorb his iron, right? you got to take what the reason, figure out why you're not absorbing that. Again, get to the cause, not just treat the symptom with more iron. So take B-complex and your iron will go up without having to take an iron supplement. Because if you take too much iron, it's going to back you up. Right? You, you're does that help your hair? Mm -hmm. Yes. The iron? Does yes, ma'am. Does it have hair nails? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's why she's so beautiful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's my date night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 All right. All right. So really quick before I close, guys, I'll be here. Stacey will be here to answer any personal questions. But just remember, and I, I didn't have time to get through because we're out of time. But just remember uh, that... This stuff's important, guys. All this stuff's been vitamin and importance. But if you don't, if you don't get this big picture here, if, if your body's not absorbing this stuff, it doesn't matter how much stuff you take, right? You gotta get what God gave you to get healthy from the inside out, the brain, spinal cord, and nervous system, because your gut can't absorb this stuff if it's not communicating with the brain back and forth. So that's why. The, the adjustments, getting your nervous system looked at by us and showing up for your appointments is more important than just taking the supplements. Because if you just take the supplements, you're not going to get the benefit of this and you, you're going to have to take supplements forever. We just want your body healing. We want to get rid of the interference the way God designed it through those treatments and adjustments so your heart can beat for your lungs to breathe, so you can digest that food, so your thyroid can function properly, so you don't have to take supplements for that, so your blood pressure comes down naturally, so you don't have to take supplements. So get this fixed before you just say, I don't need this because all I want is this. Does that make sense to you guys? And so if you've never had that looked at, see me or Stacy or one of the staff at the end so we can check that out for you, okay? But bless you guys. Thank you for your time, and I'll be here to answer any questions because John's got to go on to the game.